Uh, Congressman Jordan, good to have you with us tonight. Um, you know, when you look at the the issues that were discussed today, the reforms that are out there, you know, Andy McCarthy uh, sort of ripped into the whole idea that Congress really even can be effective in this sort of in these sort of changes. He said we don't, you know, the federal government has done um, a, a job with intelligence agencies and the FBI in recent years that he says doesn't really. Uh, recommend them in terms of, of being able to make things better in this regard. He said the NYPD has driven homicide in the nation's biggest city down 86 percent since 1990, saving tens of thousands of lives, mostly in minority communities previously plagued by yeah. violent crime. So what do you say about that, about the undertaking that we all watched today? Well, I, I think Andy's got a great point. Uh, look, we live in a federal system. We, we would much prefer this stuff happen at the state and local level. That's where it's supposed to happen. But there are things that we can incentivize when it comes to federal tax dollars that can hopefully get the kind of training and kind of accountability in place that will help make things better. I thought the best line today, the line that grabbed everyone, at least it grabbed me, was the line from George Floyd's brother when he said, life is precious. And, and amen to that. The life of George Floyd was precious, is precious. The life of Pat Underwood was precious, is precious. Life is precious. And we should understand that when we put together these policies. We don't want anything like what happened to George Floyd Minneapolis to happen again. It's a tragedy, and the people who did it should face swift justice. But by the same token, we need to understand some other key principles, like the vast majority of police officers, as you just said, Martha, are doing a great job risking their lives every day. And, of course, this other fundamental principle that defunding the police is, is craziness, and we should not even entertain anything along those lines. So that, to me, was the real takeaway from today's hearing, and I hope that we can begin to work together and actually improve the situation. You know, I, I mean, one of the issues is, um, you know, how you go about that. I, I want to play this soundbite from Sonny Johnson, um, who was at a White House roundtable today with black leaders, talking about which party she thinks uh, has been more responsive and effective. Watch this. All of these things have been under Democratic control for 60 years, and they are not going to change until you, we have a Republican Party that is willing to go into these communities and actually offer a choice to these people about how we can do things differently. Because the way it is structured now, the only choice that we get is left or either further left. What do you say to that? No, I think, I, I think Jack Kemp talked about this several decades ago. We, we should do more. The Republican Party should reach out to all Americans. We want, we want all Americans to experience the American dream, to have goals, to have dreams, and, and to be able to chase them down through hard work, through initiative, and make them happen. And that means good schools. That means good communities. That means, that means a police force that, that works with their community. All those things are important, and we should, we should mm -hmm. be for this. I will tell you this. This administration did the first step act, which was the first, ma the biggest major reform we've had in, mm -hmm. in prison reform that helps all Americans, but certainly impacts the African American community. This administration, prior to the coronavirus, was leading the, the 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 amazing economy that we had, that had the lowest unemployment in 50 years for all Americans, all Americans. So th th that is the kind of thing that makes sense. That is just good for this country, good for this this the greatest nation mm -hmm. in history. So uh, th th I think those are the kind of things we do need to focus on, and we all need to right. work on making sure the country is moving in the right direction. So we all know that we have seen too many videos like the one that we saw that ended George Floyd's life, in which his life ended. Um, what do you think are the most effective reforms? What do you think could be produced from Congress that would have an impact nationwide that would make individuals who are capable of that kind of treatment of another human being, A, be, you know, either be kicked out of the police force or, or B, never make it into the force in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to think, and look, we're working with everyone. We're, we're talking with people in the Justice Department, people in the White House, people in the Senate, and we're talking with, with, with our, my Democrat colleagues to try to come up with how we can incentivize, use federal tax dollars to, to help states and, and, and localities m move in the right direction and accomplish it. It's accountability, it's transparency, it's, it's proper training. All those things are important, and let's look at ways we can foster and promote the very best practices so that, again, what happened to Mr. Floyd in Minneapolis never happens again. And by the same token, what happened to Pat Underwood never happens again as well. So let's, let's, let's focus on working together to actually make that happen. I think you saw that in the hearing today. Um, that's, that's, that's the vision I have and the mission I have. The president said it best a week and a half ago. 
He said, healing, not hatred, uh, justice, not chaos. In his speech he gave in Florida a week and a half ago, that should be our mission. Healing, not hatred, justice, not chaos. Yeah. That's, that's the hallmark of the House Judiciary Committee with its storied history of defending the Constitution and, and, and defending the rule of law. Let's do all that, but let's do it together for the good of the country. With respect uh, for everybody on all sides, thank you very much, Congressman Jordan.